G'day trendsetters, today I'm coming to you from St. Francisville, Louisiana. If you've ever ridden a road racing bicycle, you might have heard of a race called Rouge Roubaix. This town historically has hosted a particular race. I'm going to ride a variant of the Rouge Roubaix course today. It's a race I've ridden several times and I've had good and bad luck at. But I want to rate along the way. Before I kick off, we'll uh, give you a tour of the little town of St. Francisville, Louisiana. It's been many years since I've been to this small town. It's not too big. This is the historic downtown. Ford dealership. Bohemian Ville Antiques. Fire station. So this is pretty much the edge of town in terms of commercial properties. There's some beautiful homes around here. We might catch some of these on the way back into town because I will be riding directly back on this road. Incidentally, this town is in West Feliciana Parish. Pardon the sun glare. Oh, there you go, folks. On the right side, United States Post Office for St. Francisville, Louisiana. Okay, I'm getting on to the outskirts of town where I'll start the course proper, which is on pavement for quite a few uh, kilometers. I think I've got about 25 Ks of riding on pavement. Unfortunately, I have to ride a, uh, a couple of mile section of this highway, there's no bike lane, and it's pretty high speed. During the race, we had a rolling uh, roadblock with the police, but obviously I'm by myself today. Off the highway, thankfully. Now under some quiet Louisiana back roads. In case you're wondering, this surface here is not gravel. It's this very rough, chips hill pavement. I've got uh, big tires. This is what I last rode here. The last time I raced this event, riding Victoria uh, Pave tires. Uh, I think they were 700C by 24 millimeters. So <laughs> that was uh, quite a different time back then on road bikes as well. In fact, I'll overlay a little bit of footage from my more successful foray at this race. What's interesting, I never had time to focus on any of the scenery every time I attended the Rouge Rouge Bay race. There's, these are lovely roads. Hopefully they are uh, nice and quiet. This is a weekday, late October 2020. So we're on to the race course proper. Again, quite a bit of pavement. And this bridge has been rebuilt. It was a little bit different. I don't actually have footage of this part of the course when I raced it. I think my last race was 2012 here. So about this point, so just after the bridge that you saw a moment ago, back in 2011, I bridged up solo to the breakaway that had established itself in Rouge Bay. This was at mile three, mind you, of a 105 mile road race. I'll tell you how it worked out later on. Onto another beautiful side road here in the West Felicianas. One thing to remember, this is not going to be a full-on preview of the Rouge Bay course. Rather, it's uh, parts I want to explore, but it does feature the key dirt and gravel roads that are part of the 
20, well, there's been a few different versions and the course has changed a little bit, but it keeps the very important key sectors, Blockhouse, Tunica Hills and so on. I'll narrate those as I come upon them. These Louisiana back roads, despite this being paved, absolutely beautiful. Very low traffic. I've seen some traffic on the more primary roads, but on this road, nothing. Fantastic. These trees are being cleared, I believe, are remnants from the recent hurricane that came through last week, or the week and a half before thereabouts. Now this road I'm riding was not ever featured in Rouge Roubaix, but it could have been. It probably should have been. Look how beautiful it is. Today's route is about 151 kilometers, it's about 93 miles. The true race course for Rouge Bay averages about 170 kilometers or about 105 miles thereabouts. There's my Steve for today, the beautiful Ribble CGR SL fitted with SRAMs wonderful ETAP wide force drive train. Uh, reviews of those coming soon. And the wheel set is the very splendiferous Bird GVX22. That wheel set tips the scales at 1,117 grams with tape and valves. Amazing. Reviews coming soon. on a lovely Louisiana dirt and gravel road, although this is not part of the Rouge Bay course. Myself and many other people rode this race on 24 millimeter tires or narrower. Check this out. Now this road has been on the race course. Now I believe I've got footage, I think it was 2012, and it was a mad scramble around here. <laughs> I wasn't well positioned going into that corner. I just disturbed a bunch of wild turkeys in the middle of the road, damper, here in the woods. There they are, trotting around. <laughs> Uh, they're all flying off. Uh, they roost pretty well. There you go, there's one. Is this beautiful or what? This road did feature on the 2012 or 2013 course or whenever I last rode it. I don't remember exactly. It's a bit foggy the memory. The other thing you have to remember is myself, like everybody else in the race at the time, had their head down chasing wheels ahead of them. So <laughs> my focus was trying to stay in touch with the group which in that particular edition had blown to pieces. Check this out, this ravine. Now, don't mind the trash the humans are left behind, but these are sorts of views you often miss when you've got your head down chasing wheels and so on.
onto another beautiful section of Louisiana pavement. It appears I'm rolling into Mississippi. If memory serves me correctly, I'm about 800 meters from the very first sector of dirt that featured in the 2011 Rouge Bay. It looks different from 2011, but this is it. Rouge Bay is historically raced in March and there's not a lot of tree cover going on around that time. Wow. In fact, here's uh, some footage again from my 2011 Rouge Bay. The thing is vastly apparent about revisiting this road all these years later is the camera technology is improved and my fitness was way, <laughs> way better then. At this point during my 2011 experience, I was in a seven man breakaway, working very well together, just pulling nice long turns. It was a huge advantage being in a group that small. There was no fighting for position as we rode onto the gravel, which is always fun times in a massive group. Hello, there's a cat with a mouse. Snack time. Hello, cat. Okay, I remember this curve. Way different to how I recall it from 2011 though. And back on to pavement. I forgot how rough some of these uh, Louisiana gravel roads are. Still amazed we rode these things on 24mm tyres. This long section of pavement heads towards a town in Mississippi known as Woodville. The race never actually visited Woodville, it would uh, U-turn on the outskirts and then head back towards the second sector of dirt as most of the courses went to a heinous sector known as Blockhouse Hill which you will see a little bit later. This sector of pavement during Rouge Roo Bay was often a no man's land for a lot of riders. If you weren't in the breakaway or weren't in the main pack you had a long chase with not a lot of protection. The official race course continues in that direction on pavement, but I'm taking a different route. This is a road I've always wanted to explore. It's pretty difficult to find a bad road in this neck of the woods, especially once you get yourself off the pavement. That was steep. Whew. This road I'm traversing at the moment is pretty much along a ridge. Look how far it drops down into the forest. Look at this lovely little drop off right ahead of us. Okay, that's called Handlebar Mount Camera Time. Well, this bridge appears to be closed, there was no warning of it, but you can go around it, obviously when the water is flowing hard, no way, but this is a fresh bridge, so whatever was here before was likely washed away. I can smell fresh tar, etc. on that bridge. I'm being a little bit naughty here and walking the closed bridge. 
I might be the very first cyclist to walk across this thing. I could have ridden it, but you know, that's too easy, isn't it? Back onto pavement, making the haul towards the, usually it's the second sector of Rouge Bay. And this one is a little bugger. You'll see soon enough. Atop the mound, you can see the fencing of the graveyard that was referenced in the plaque. Still riding pavement, and somewhere along this desolate stretch was where my ill fated breakaway from the 2011 Rouge Bay was caught. In fact, this scene here, you can see my mate K Dog in the orange kit, and I believe he said something like, Hey, welcome back, bitch, and I get dropped, or something like that. Very unkind words. The pavement ends one mile. Welcome to Fort Adams, Mississippi. I don't know how much is in this town. Never actually stopped here. The race has always taken a left-hand turn up here. So let's check out the town, whatever's there, real quick. This is Fort Adams. I don't really think there's much here anymore. There's some houses and so on, but I'm pretty sure it's almost a ghost town now. There's an old church here. St. Patrick's Catholic Church. Built in 1900, wow. Yeah, there isn't very much here. This town is pretty much just a few houses and a couple of old buildings. So I'm going to press on. I'm really hoping there's a store at the end of the next road I'll show you in a moment. So if you've ever ridden Rouge Bay, this left heads towards Blockhouse Hill and that's a new sign. Well, maybe not. The road closed half a mile ahead, local traffic only. I happen to remember this road very well. In the Picker Plank Bridge, it might be trashed, we'll soon find out. And uh, this road was always very bad, especially this paved sector. In fact, the original promoter, Mitch, if he's watching, always said this road resembled a carpet bombing attack. The, the results of a carpet bombing attack. Road closed, 1500 feet. Let's hope that's not the case because otherwise, I've got a really, really long way to backtrack. Fingers crossed. Oh man, okay, they're doing bridge work up here. I uh, don't know how I'm gonna get around this. I might have to go up the river a little bit. I have to get across. Well, this bridge is under construction. I'm gonna get across. Oh, Thanks, lads. Save me a lot of cut around. Thanks, dude. That was awesome. Those guys saved me a big uh, detour. Well, I really got lucky then. That was very nice of those gentlemen to stop their excavating temporarily and let me cross. Now, I don't know if you can see the Garmin screen there. That is Blockhouse Hill coming up. Now, if the group was together in this race, this hill typically exploded a pretty big. And there used to be a gentleman from the race organization who would wave a $100 bill for each group that came through. So you had a nice little premium at the top that obviously helped with the mayhem. Back in 2011, I was back with the group, but uh, quickly got dropped, as you'll see in, in the video. And here is the 2020 view of the climb. This part of the climb is about 11 to 13%, and it's typically got steep a little bit further with a lot of sand on the surface. It's quite loose. And remember, we were doing this on 700C by 24 millimeter tires. Well, this is much nicer than I recall it. I've got lower gears, bigger tires, and someone's laid, not asphalt, but some kind of hard pack on top. It's not as loose. You can see how steep this climb is by the earth wall. Look at that. And here's the summit. It's 
it's about a kilometre long this climb it is a bastard for sure but uh, definitely easier today well apart from being knackered easier than it was in the past at least in terms of equipment and conditions and so on my form that's another question <laughs> At this point in the race, if you weren't dropped from the front group, there was a mad chase. This next section features undulating rolling hills, so there was always a chance to regroup. That section right there often features sand at the bottom, so that was always a challenge riding narrow roadie tyres. Check out the view off the road. Okay, that's the end of the Blockhouse Hill sector and the recreation area here on the right is closed huh. okay so i'm really hoping the store that was historically always here and i double checked i should have called i guess known as the pond store should be coming up on the left let's hope it's open i checked the hours of course i didn't call oh man that store is not open great Oh, it's a bummer. The store's supposed to be open and it's not. Okay, well I've got no option, I have to press on. That store being closed is a bummer because I was factoring on a stop. You can see we've got two bottles, one litre bottles. Thankfully I uh, thought about this, so I've been skimping on drinking, which is not the best thing to do, but I've still got uh, hopefully enough fluid to last me 37 miles or 60 k's back to town. Back into Louisiana. Bye bye, Mississippi. And I still have not replenished this water. I am feeling pretty crappy. I've got gels and whatnot, but I really do need some fluid. So, yeah, I'm going to have to find a uh, house or a little church or something like that and refill here pretty soon. Well, that's handy. I managed to find a spigot at the fire station right here on this road uh, which is really close to Tunica Hills so thank you fire station let's refill the water hopefully uh, this water's okay or else I'll be sick pretty soon so we'll find out I'll be turning down that road momentarily I'm just checking out the town here I'm right near Tunica Hills I'm curious if there's anything around here in terms of stores I think it's pretty much nothing this is the post office for Tunica Louisiana Zip code 70782. And here we are going on to Old Tunica Road. In the 2011 Rouge Rebay, I was in the group. Mind you, clinging on for life because I've been dropped in the blockhouse sector earlier on. Then I got back on and then the wall appeared. You'll see that momentarily. Incidentally, the post office had absolutely nothing. The convenience store that used to be here is closed. So I should have enough fluid. I've got about 23 and a half miles for the ride. So I'm just going to cruise in. I'm feeling pretty knackered. Obviously been conserving the water. I've got some water now, but I'm still pretty tired. Would be nice to have some uh, sugary water like a Coke. Okay. Okay, can you see the Garmin? Maybe not. It doesn't look pretty though, I'll tell you. Around this corner in a second, and I'll show <laughs> the footage from my 2011 race. Sorry if I keep repeating that. You can see what's coming up just around the corner. In fact, small chambering time. There we go. So imagine doing this on a road bike with not low enough gears and 24 or 23 millimeter tires. Fun times. This is a section always exploded the race. That's the worst section of the climb behind me. That was 18%. It's leveled off a bit. There is the view looking down. And the summit is right there. And there's my steed precariously balanced right near the summit. Time to roll, the day is getting on. 
this is pretty much the summit so if you were in the front group great if not you had a lot of chasing to do on some very treacherous roads just when you thought you were done ouch I believe this is the final sector of gravel on the uh, Rooster Bay course. I'm going to take a right. If you recall earlier, I came up that grade and went that direction, going this direction. And uh, the last feed zone used to be right here when the race was happening. Got about 20, well, sorry, yeah, 30 kilometers to ride, just under 20 miles. Well, the memories are flooding back, especially for how hard this course is, particularly that. Uh, all the convenience stores I was expecting to be open today are uh, closed, looks like permanently. So I've effectively done, well we'll have finished this ride probably on about two and a half litres of water with mix and a few gels. But I'm pretty calorie deficient so you could say I'm doing some keto training. Not that I'm doing any of that stuff. I've got about 20 kilometres left until I reach the end of the course. And like I said, this is a slightly modified course, so the real one is uh, a little bit longer. This one featured more dirt and gravel, but that point aside, tough riding, and of course I made a tough on myself with uh, no hydration stops, except for the fire station. I'm so going to mangle the cokes I have in my core in my car when I finish this ride. This final sector of pavement features some really bad pavement. A lot of it's worse than some of the tougher dirt and gravel sections along this course. At this point of the course, I think I've got about oh, seven or eight miles, 12 or 13 kilometers still to ride. Back on the gravel, this is unexpected. They're doing some road work along this section, of course, pointing to the signage back there. I think this section always was gravel, I just don't remember it. It's been a while, as I said. Okay, I'm expecting this to go back on the pavement in a second. Pavement of sorts. Here is the creek crossing, which is different to how I remember it. But you make it this far at Rouge Bay, either for a casual ride or a race, you're gonna make it. It's about five miles from the finish. And it was always a welcome sign like it is today because I am completely and utterly bloody knackered this folks is the second to last hill along the course and where I unknowingly lost a top three place at the 2011 Rouge Bay could I have done anything about it if I'd known more than likely not because I was pretty cracked. I mean, I'm cracked today, but I was far more cracked on that particular day. And that is the final bridge crossed. Just 750 meters to the left hand turn. And if the race was happening, there is an uphill finish. A lot of times this race to finish in onesie twosies. I'm sure there was some bunch prints at the front end of the, the uh, race. I never had to deal with that. Usually I was uh, shattered. Even when I got the top five, that's my best place ever here at Rouge Bay. Into the outskirts of St. Francisville. And there is the hill in question. In fact, that bloke just got off the bike. I don't know if you can see it from this distance. <laughs> That's the courthouse. And the race finished right about here. Let's have a quick look at some of the historic buildings. Grandmother's Buttons. That's a pretty interesting building. This was the Bank of Commerce and Trust Co. It's amazing I attended this race about three times I think 
and not once did I ever check out these historic homes. I think it's prudent in life to stop and smell the roses, as they say. Or in this case, the beautiful historic homes here in St. Francisville, Louisiana. All these homes have stories, so if you're ever in town, come on by the historic district, walk around, ride your bike, etc. There's a lot of placards and so on with the history of many of these houses. There's the West Feliciana Historical Society. Definitely worth a visit. That about wraps up the video folks. I would have wrapped up the video on the bike. In fact, I tried to, but I ran out of battery. So, I hope you enjoyed tagging along, watching me suffer, ride these beautiful roads through the West Felicianas and into Mississippi. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the Gravel Cyclist YouTube channel and don't forget to click the bell button to be notified of future videos as they appear in the channel. There'll be more of this madness, product reviews and other crazy stuff. I'll see you in the next video.